Welcome to Yak and Danda. My name's Will. I am Mick, and this is the 2022 Giant Trance 29. And we have brought it to Yak and Danda as a part of our Ride High Country test sessions. That's right, the Trance is a classic trail bike for giants. We thought, what better place to bring it to than some classic trails? So join us as we put the Trance to the test on the Yak Tracks. Yoo-hoo! Yes, this is the new 2022 Giant Trance 29. And for this year, we've got a new frame, updated geometry, in-frame storage, and Fox Live valve integration. Now, the Trance 29 remains as Giant's short travel trail bike. So it sits between the Anthem, the cross-country race bike, and the Trance X, which is the all-mountain bike. Here we've got 130 mil travel on the front and compared to the old Trance 29, a five millimeter increase on rear travel to 120 millimeters via the Maestro suspension design. Now there will be three carbon models in the Trance 29 lineup for 2022 and one alloy bike with prices starting at four and a half grand. The bike we've been testing here is the Trance Advance Pro 29.1, which has a retail price of 8,699 Australian dollars. You're getting a full carbon fiber frame, Fox live valve suspension, a Shimano XT group set, giant TRX carbon wheels, and 2.5 inch Maxxis tires with a minion on the front and an aggressor on the rear. Confirmed weight for our medium sized test bike is 13.38 kilos. There's nowhere else like Yak and Danda. The trails are super unique. There's about 70 Ks of really classic hand cut single track out there. But what I like about it the most is the way that the trails really play with the, the remnants of the old gold mining era. You'd be riding through these crazy gullies of eroded <laughs> sections that have clearly been mined back in the day. Uh, the, the woods and the trails are all very open and fast and flowing. And it just, it's just nothing else like it in the high country. It's completely different to Brighton, Beechworth and Buller and Falls. But just over the road from Beechworth and Brighton is Yak and Dando. It's, 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 a, it's a really nice place to come to mountain biking. The new Trance 29 frame is significantly beefier than the old bike. We've got this enormous head tube junction and a massive down tube, the latter of which hides in frame storage, which is a first for Giant. We've got this trap door here on the carbon frame, which reveals a tool roll inside for carrying your spare tube, tie levers, and any other spares. There's also new rubber armoring underneath the down tube and along the chain stay to silence chain slap. And we've also got ISCG tabs for mounting on a chain guide. There's something really sweet about the town of Yakandanda. The main street is tree line, it's like a tunnel of green and all the shops are really funky and colorful. It's nice to just wander around town and see what's happening. Great food, good cafes. And uh, yeah, nice things to do when you're not vlog on the single track. I feel so relaxed. <laughs> yeah, do you want to keep riding? Yeah, we'll keep riding. The geometry on the new bike isn't too far different from the old Trance 29, which we reckon is a good thing. The new frame does update with a flip chip, which gives you the option of high and low geometry positions. Now in high, the geometry is pretty similar to the old bike, but in low, the bottom bracket drop is 45 millimeters, which is very low to the ground. The head tube angle also slackens out to 65.5 degrees, and the reach measurement has also increased slightly to 447 millimeters on our medium sized test bike. The seat tube angle is also quite a bit steeper at 76.3 degrees in the low position. Chainstay length is also a touch longer at 439 millimeters while still having clearance for that 2.5 inch tie in the back. Just rolling off the trails. Welcome to Yak Creek Distillery.
Also new, Giant brings Fox live valve technology to the Trance 29 for the very first time. Now for 2022, live valve will be available in two different levels, at the factory series level, but also the cheaper performance elite level. The latter of which is actually exclusive to Giant, and it means you'll be able to get Fox live valve at a cheaper price point. In fact, this trance model we've got here is currently the cheapest complete bike on the market that comes with Fox live valve. As for the function itself, Live Valve is designed as an automated electronic suspension system. There are sensors both on the fork and at the rear dropout, which measure bump forces, and the idea is that the system will open or close the fork and shock in about three milliseconds, which is quite fast, depending on what the terrain is doing underneath the rider. The idea here is to improve pedal efficiency, but also lift the ride height of the bike on the climbs to provide more pedal clearance and improve the seated pedaling position. It's certainly a fascinating system in terms of the way that it works on the trail, but it does add extra complexity, cost, you've got a battery there to charge and you've also got extra cables to manage. But Giant clearly believes in the technology and you'll be seeing Fox Live Valve on a lot of Giant models for 2022, including the new Anthem, the Trance 29, the Trance X e-bike and the Rain 29. <laughs> Sweet. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> well, we're back at the pub. Trans 29 review. Let's talk about it. Absolutely. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the old model first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, I mean, we've had quite a lot of experience with the previous Trans 29. I tested the, the green carbon one. You had the orange alloy one. Yep. And the, the black carbon one. The single track charmer, I called it. <laughs> Loved it. Yep. Yeah, I think we've both had really positive experience with the Trans 29. It's a yep. ripping trail bike. Um, and in terms of the new one, it builds on the same recipe, the same platform. Um, pretty aggro geometry, but there have been a number of improvements on this, on this platform. So frames a lot beefier think you were finding with the, the previous Trans 29, perhaps a little bit a little bit soft. Yeah, it had a very light chassis, especially in the back end. Yep. So they've definitely beefened things up here to the to, to give the, the geometry what it deserves in terms of handling. Um, you've also got bigger 2.5 inch tyres, um, slightly longer back end and the steeper seat tube angle, quite noticeable on the climbs. Really nice climbing platform on this bike. So I think there's been a, a number of really usable improvements. Mm. Um, and it's a really balanced bike on the trail. Sure is. In terms of weight distribution, cornering. Um, cornering performance for me is a huge thing with this bike. It absolutely rips through yep. turns. Yep, you're ripping. On paper and seeing the silhouette of the Trans 29, it feels like it encroaches on Trans X territory, the model above this in terms of, you know, suspension. Yeah, what yeah, it, yeah, you, yeah. And the bike that you had a lot of experience with. Yeah, so I tested the Trans X 29 last year um, and the new Trans 29, it's got a lot of similarities really. It, it's shorter travel, obviously, but the head angle is like basically the same. The reach is very similar. Chainstay length, the wheelbase, the bottom bracket drop, like the geometry itself, it's very close between yeah. these two bikes. The Trans X obviously gets you an extra 20 mil or so of travel front and rear. Um, and that's the big difference between the two bikes. So in terms of ride quality, the Trans X is more forgiving. Uh, I think you get better traction on really rough kind of loose trails. It's it's definitely, uh, there's, there's a bigger margin for error with the extra travel on that bike. And I think you could borderline ride and race enduro you yeah. know, on that Trans sure. It's very capable. With this guy, you're, uh, you've got a little bit less travel there, you've got a little bit more support, you're a little bit closer to the ground, and that all adds up to responsiveness. Like, yeah. it just absolutely rips. Um, in it's more, terms it's of, more a lively and engaging feel. Totally. Less isolated than the Trans X. More feedback, for yeah. sure. Yep. Um, but I think on the trails we've been riding here at Yakinanda, that's been um, a good thing because you, you can really load up the bike through the turns and flip flops from side to side, you know, really quickly. Mm. Uh, there's very little hesitation yep. there. So I think that's the advantage of the shorter travel Trans 29 over the bigger travel Trans X, sure. which is the all mountain bike, 
this is the trail bike. Yeah. That's how I describe it. Cool. Even though they do look a bit similar on paper and silhouette, a very different ride character. Huh? Sure. I think there's yeah. going to be some people who will be a bit confused, maybe not sure which way yeah. to go. Um, they're both great bikes, but definitely this one here, responsiveness, um, pedal efficiency, climbing performance, um, and just cornering is, is mm. awesome. The other thing uh, we have to talk about on this bike is the Fox Live valve system. Yeah. Now we don't want to talk about it forever because this is the only model out of four that will be coming with live valve. Sure, yep. Um, but we do need to touch on it because it is a big contributing factor to how this bike rides um, and it's got pros and cons. So I want to talk about live valve and your experience with it because you went to the original launch yeah. three, three years ago or whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on live valve? Not just uh, the technology, but how it's applied on this bike and how it affects the ride quality? I mean, yeah, the technology and how it works and all the considerations that have been taken into account for it to happen, it's fascinating. For a bike geek and for someone who appreciates the technology, it is, it is really impressive. <laughs> um, when it was launched, uh, there wasn't a lot a consumer could do uh, at home. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the valving and the, you know, a lot of the tunability, tunability yep. was in the hands of the bike manufacturer, so you couldn't do too much. Mm -hmm. Now they've updated uh, Fox Live Valve with an app mm -hmm. that the consumer can choose between a bunch of modes, which gives you a lot of tuning options yep. over, over how it feels. Plus you have that five levels of sensitivity. So you've got a lot you can do and you know, you, you, and, it's, and it's easy to do. Yeah. On this bike, what it really does is it, is, it, is it really helps you sit up higher in its travel and for climbing and just general efficiency, yeah. you can just pedal a lot more you know, you know, you're not bashing your cranks on technical climbs on rocks, yeah. and your know, seating position is is a lot more efficient, and it's a very much a set and forget bike. So it's not just about pedal efficiency. Mm. I think that's perhaps something that people mistake about sure. live valve. It's not just and about not bobbing. Exactly, yeah. and it's not just locking out or unlocking the suspension. It's it's alternating between firm and open. Um, but yeah, it's that additional ride height on the climb. So the seated position on this with live valve engaged, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. It like, feels really solid, that platform underneath the shock. Um, and I, I think that's definitely an improvement. One thing that really struck me as soon as I got on this bike, after riding, you know, all the bikes at home and rah-rah, it's just the way that you'd be bouncing along the trail and the saddle through all those undulations and it just doesn't oscillate. You, you, you compress in the saddle because you're going through a bump and then it just stops at the top again. Yeah, yeah. It just holds you up and you can just feel that little valve going and it just cancels out any just of that unwanted like oscillating and you just keep on the gas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah. I think, um, and the, the other thing that I've found is I, I like that you can get on the bike and just ride. You don't have to think about it. Yeah, you it's pretty simple. Turn live valve on, switch your brain off. Yeah. Um, there's no remote lockout or anything you have to worry about. And even if you were going to lock out the fork and the shock, you know, even if you had your thumb on there yeah. all the time, opening and closing, there's no way you could do it as quickly as yeah. this system can. Yeah, you'd be getting a sore thumb or you couldn't be bugged. Yeah, you just be bothered. can't be yeah. bothered. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, and, and I think with the trails we've been riding here, which undulate a lot, yeah. there's definitely little pinch climbs yep. that, that happen quite regularly. So having the system just instantly firm up the suspension for you in those scenarios, um, it's, it's making better use of that damping sure. than a human ever could. We've also had the Scott Spark here, mm -hmm. uh, which is a very similar bike in terms of travel and geometry and so on, um, but it uses a twin lock remote system, which is very effective, but you have to use it quite regularly to get the yep. most out of that bike. Yep. And the beauty about jumping from the Spark onto this yeah. was just instantly, you just didn't have to think about it. You just yeah. focus on the trail and ride. All right, come this way, we're gonna show you something cool. We're gonna demonstrate how Live Valve adjusts the suspension based on whether you're climbing or descending. Now, what you wanna listen for here is a clicking noise, which is the latching solenoid opening or closing the valve, depending on the gradient of the terrain. So first, let's demonstrate climbing. Now let's do descending. Now let's simulate going off a jump, free fall. Cool, huh? It's so cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's pretty impressive. It's amazing. It's not that much of a difference, but it yeah. changes the system completely. 
There you go. There you go. It's not all peaches and cream with Fox Live Valve, though. No. I mean, th there are downsides. So tell me what you're not into about Live Valve. Yeah, I mean, Live Valve, it adds complexity in the way of another battery. Um, it's a, obviously, you can see it. It's, it sticks out on the frame. Wires on the fork, rear shock, and in the rear dropout. So it adds complexity, cost, wires, weight, another battery to charge. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're riding it, there is a little bit more feedback through the fork. I find, mm -hmm. you know, in my hands, it feels like there's a feels like there's a slight communication breakdown between, um, you know, the terrain and my hands, which causes a bit more feedback. And I'd say that's largely down to the uh, Fit Four damper versus, mm. uh, you know, the the, the, grip the, the, the Uber grip Plus too. Grip Two damper, which I know really well. And it's, sure. I mean, that's that's probably my main gripe with it. Yeah, I, I really I I'm just fascinated by it, and I, I like it, and it's quiet. It's yeah, it's a bit of a it's just clever, man. Like, mm -hmm. It's really clever. Yeah. yeah. I think some people will be into it and others won't be, and that's fine because yeah. there are other models that, that don't come with live valves, so choose those if you're, if you're not into it. Yeah, yeah. Quickly, I want to ask you about the down tube storage. Good feature? Yeah, it's a great it? feature. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's super handy being able to leave your spares, whatever you need, in the bike and leave it there. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot of space, um, mm -hmm. I would say, compared to, say, the Trek and Specialized who have, have been working with this sort of inter internal storage concept for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's great it's there. The door itself is quite a bit smaller, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, no no large burrito, just a small <laughs> small burrito will fit in there. It's, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's actually really nifty. I like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk about the Trans 29 as a whole. Who's gonna be into this bike? Who's gonna be attracted to this bike? Well, it has a very solid chassis, mm -hmm. fairly Aggressive geometry, mm -hmm. which means for a heavier rider or an aggressive rider or a rider who really likes to, you know, rip turns, give the trail a bit of um, what they call it, what, the, what do the kids call it, give it some berries. Some steez. Yeah, some steez. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a rewarding bike to ride. It's, it's, it's that classic down country bike, for want of a better term. Mm -hmm. That means it's, you know, the, the, the geometry and, and, the, and the position of the bike is there. Mm -hmm. Might not have heaps of suspension, yep. but that, is, that in, in a way gives, gives it that liveliness and sporty feel on the, bike, on the, on the trail, which I really like because, you know, my bikes tend to be getting shorter and shorter and shorter in travel, but more progressive and more progressive in geometry. And, that's, just, that's something that feels nice when you ride. Yeah. It's part of the fun. It's a lot of the fun. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be isolated from the trail and you know, not feel it. You want to work with it mm -hmm. and, um, and going different places and understanding the trail and how they feel. And the terrain varies so much wherever yep. the places that we go and it's a nice way to, to feel the trail. Sure. I think the, the, the flip side of that for me is the Anthem is like the hardcore race bike. Yeah. I think for a lot of people um, with a tire change, you know, to some like oh, yeah. put some recon race tires or something on this, It'll be a really good cross-country bike, you know, if you're not like taking racing super seriously. Sure. Or, doing it, or doing it more than an hour and a half. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, I think it'll, it'll inspire confidence for riders who might find cross-country bikes a bit angry, you know, a bit too firm and stressful, um, stressful yeah. to ride. So I think, yeah, I think there are two sort of different riders there that will be attracted to this bike. But fundamentally, I'm into the changes that the Giant has made to this bike. Um, I think the handling is and the weight distribution are fantastic. They've yep. improved the capability um, on what was already quite an aggressive little trail ripper mm. um, and, and taken it uh, up a notch. This has been a hoot. We've had a great time in Yakindanda. This is the fourth Rider High Country test sessions that we've done. We went from Beechworth to Mount Buller to Buxton and now in Yakindanda. It's been fantastic. Yeah. Now, for you guys, if you're interested in the full review on the new Giant Trance 29, make sure you go to flowmountainbike.com. We've put a link in the video description below. Click that, and that will take you through to the full review of this bike right here. Now, if you've got any questions for us about the Trance 29, chances are they are already answered in the full review. But if they're not, drop those into the comments below, and we'll do our best to answer them for you. Otherwise, I think it's time to get another beer and have some food at the pub. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Cheers for watching and we'll see you next time from a new destination and a new bike. Mm -hmm. Later.
Are you ready to press send, Will? 